don't you hate it when you have to move around configurations? Because I do, and it annoyed me, it annoyed me so much, that I decided to fix this issue. When you work with Emacs, chances are you want to try out people's configurations, maybe you like them, maybe you don't, maybe you want, um, I don't know, maybe you want to try out different pre-made configs, and what you end up doing is grabbing your .emacs.d directory, you end up moving it somewhere else or renaming it to something descriptive, then you grab the other one and you rename it to .emacs.d and you end up doing this, then you download more and more configurations, it ends up being a huge mess, you don't know what you're doing, nobody knows what they're doing, it's all good, I fixed it, okay? I fixed the issue. I wrote a little tool, I call it ISEC, which stands for I hate switching Emacs configs, and it's a bash script. Um, it's a bash script that does a few things. Now you can take a look at the uh, source if you'd like, it's not particularly uh, huge, nor is it particularly impressive other than this line that I need to change because I was being an idiot when I wrote it apparently. Um, let me show you what it does so you are not lost. Isaac, I have it installed here. I can do Isaac list. I'm going to get available configurations. Um, the one I have available is called personal. I can select configurations by doing Isaac set and then personal. So if yeah, it's set now. It is. I can do I don't know, Isaac help. These are the commands. There is another one that I just added. Well, I'll show you in just a second. I can also install um, configurations from GitHub or any other Git-based repo. I can do Isaac install and then type in the full um, URL. For instance, let's say we want GitHub. Uh, we want Space Max. It is by, I think it was SY120PNR, space max, and then as a second argument we give in a name for it to be saved as. I must have mistyped this. Oh, whoops. Yes, I did. It wasn't still, uh, it was still, not SI1. Alright, it's installing. Might take a while because space max not particularly tiny, but you get the point. So while it's installing, let's talk about some more things. It's actually never mind. Let's just let's see what happens now. We have space max as an available configuration now. So if we do isec set space max and get the confirmation, if we launch emacs, emacs inside emacs, we see space max. You can. I don't know, it doesn't really matter, we are not going to be using it. But what ends up happening is we have space mix now, so let's um let's kill it, because we don't really need it. And let's set our personal configuration back to be there, and if we launch Emax now, it's launching my own one. That's pretty sweet. Okay, I really like this. Uh, it saves me a lot of time. I think it's necessary for something like this to exist. Again, it's not particularly great code. I wrote it in Python initially. Um, ended up realizing that not everybody does have Python 3 installed. Some people don't like it. Some people prefer having like Ruby or stuff. I wanted it to be portable and, you know, lightweight and have it be everywhere so people can use it if you use multiple. Um, Emacs configs that is. So I ended up rewriting it in Bash. Let's take a look. How do you get it? Let me show you. You clone it, get in there, and then sudo make. That's all you have to do. Let me, let me show you. Uh, I think I actually have it. Oh, hang on, hang on. Yes, I did. Okay, so all you have to do is you need git and bash for this, nothing else as the dependencies tab here at top uh, might suggest. Let's clone Isaac, get in there and sudo make, that's all you have to do. It just copies the shell script to user bin Isaac. And again, um, the commands are Isaac list, Isaac set, you can Isaac delete to get rid of um, a configuration. Now keep in mind, this actually deletes the repository, I, I mean, the actual directory 
on your file system. So it's not like unsetting it, it's actually deleting it. And because I had so many, I decided to actually um, yeah, implement this. It's, it's not particularly difficult to implement, but I did it because it, it's useful. Then again, the install part, you are allowed to get repo and then the name for the configuration. That's all there is. Uh, if you just type it, if you just type isec, you're going to get some help if you can't remember all the commands maybe. Okay, now a few words on this. Um, first of all, if you take a look at this code, there might be bugs in this, okay? I, I only tested it on my machine. It should work on pretty much everywhere. It should be universal. I'm going to be making changes to Isaac. I'm not going to change any of the functionality though. It's going to remain working the same. There might be more functionality, but I'm not, not going to change anything significant. Also, I need to get rid of multiple echo statements, just put new lines in there. I'm not sure why, it, why it's this way. It was late and I was slightly inebriated. Um, for the other thing is, if you find a bug and you have a GitHub account, then please open an issue so I can actually get to fixing it. Because while it's like 100 lines of bash, I actually think that this is quite useful. Now let me show you exactly how it works though. You will see that .emacs.d is a symlink from home, and my like this is my home directory, then .isec, and then the directory for our actual config. You'll also notice I have a .isec directory here, and you need to create one when you install it. Okay, after you install it, create a .isec, and in .isec you are going to have all your configurations. And if you use the isec install um, functionality, it's going to clone the git repo into here exactly, okay? And all that happens is if you type isec list, it looks for directories in here, then looks for which directory is the symlink to .emacs.d, puts a little star there, I, want to, I actually want to have a little arrow, I'll change that in a sec, um, and it, you know, that's, that's all that isec list does. Now setting it, it unlinks .emacs.d, takes a parameter and then links whatever you passed in to .emacs.d. It does not work with directories that don't exist. So there is some error handling implemented. So you don't have to worry about like messing your system up because you made a typo. Now, it's not going to happen. I, I actually made that quite impossible to break. So when you install it, what you have to do is uh, create.isec, put your emacsd in there with a nice descriptive name and then just do again isec set uh, personal, you can call it whatever. So again, let me just show you how deleting themes works. Uh, let's say I don't like space max, so isec delete space max. Are you sure this cannot be undone? Just hit y, it's going to automatically just get rid of it, as you can see. It doesn't, it's not in there anymore. Um, another thing, if you have any ideas for what Isaac could be doing um, that you actually believe to need for your uh, Emacs config, and just please tell me, either with an issue or maybe down in the comments, uh, you will find a link to this, to the GitHub repo uh, in the description. So you can have a look at this, maybe you can um, make this a bit cleaner if you'd like, sure, why not? Maybe you could implement regular expressions here. Um, by all means, go and hack away at it. You can fork it and use it for some other configuration. Again, it's GPL free. That's the license. You can do whatever you want with it. <sighs> okay, yeah. So that's pretty much it. Just follow, follow the readme, and you're going to be set up. Again, you might want to have multiple configurations. I'm not saying you should. This is just a tool that should make it a little bit easier, okay, to handle multiple ones. Because I am working on a configuration uh, that I aim to actually distribute and switching back and forth, yeah, it's, it's just annoying, that's it. 
Oh yeah, this is not part of the actual Emacs tutorials, just consider this a little bonus, maybe you'd like to use the tool, maybe not. Thank you very much. If you have ideas for what you'd like to see regarding Emacs, ELISP, org mode, and so on and so forth, then by all means, leave a comment down below. I am not sure what else to show you uh, in terms of Emacs, of the Emacs tutorials. I have shown you all the necessary parts of it. Now you even know how to switch configs on the fly. And there is, other than showing you packages that I might find, there really is nothing much I can teach you. I am going to continue looking for nice packages. And if I find something noteworthy, then I am going to make sure to show you. But for now, really not much I can show you. Not much else there is to it. It's just, you know, it's your personal exploration that you need to continue with now. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you find this useful. If you do, and use it. If you find an issue, open an issue. If you want to improve something, then fork it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.